Let's take a stroll through the animate variables action stack here at the very top of our action browser. As you can see, we can animate, um, we can use curve functions, and we can use ease. Let's, uh, let's take a look at each one of these, starting with float. What I've got set up is uh, my old friend, the cube, and I've got a set rotation on this cube, and I'm gonna rotate the Y angle around using a float anim global variable. And I'm going to just animate this float variable over time, and we will see the result here on this cube. So I'll go ahead and zip that up and get it out of the way. And let's add an animate float action. Make sure it's at the top. And I wanna choose this float variable, the float anim. So we'll make sure we're using the same one that I've got set up down here. Always handy. And I can call finish event if I want. In this case, uh, I'll just use this done action, which will move us out to a dead state. And how we animate this float uh, over time, you know, animating means we're going to change it over time in some meaningful, significant, and interesting way. We can use a curve, an anim curve. These are really neat. If you haven't used them, I think you're going to love them. So you click once right here on the anim curve box, and you see a whole window's popped up. And you can resize it to whatever size you want. I've got it full screen, so you can enjoy. And it goes from 0, 0 down here. And our value is 1.0 on the top. And if you follow it all the way over here, it's 1.0. And uh, all the range of numbers in between. And there's a set of curves I can use right here. So of course, this one's linear. It goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And these uh, have a little bit of a curve angle on them, right? Uh, so if I just use this and I run the scene, nothing much happens, right? It doesn't look like anything happened. But in reality, what we've done is animate this float, which starts out at a value of zero. Uh, and this is going to be the value of the float. So in other words, we've taken it from a value of zero to a value of one, and we've done it over one second, okay? If I use, uh, I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll way out. I'm gonna pull way out. And I can click the middle mouse button and drag down here so I get a little more room. And now if you look at the numbers, I've got you know 55 and 60 up there. I keep pulling out a little bit because I'd like to get a big number, like around 200. There we go, there's 200. So I'm going to drag the other end of this up and you can see off the end of my mouse, uh, you can see the numbers updating. So I'm going to drag up to around 200. I don't really care to be too precise. And uh, I'm going to drag over to about 5. There's 5.1 by 199. That's good. So essentially, over 5 seconds, okay, so what's happening here, over 5 seconds in this direction, I'm going to change the value of this float from 0 to uh, well, 199, around 200. So let's close that and take a look at what happens now. Now, you see my cube moving uh, in real time as uh, that float updates. And I'll go ahead and choose real time to smooth that out. And one important distinction, on set rotation, I am doing it every frame. If I just did it once, it would run once, and that would be the end of it. Not, not the same thing you want. I am literally updating uh, and animating this cube just by animating this float. Now, maybe that doesn't seem too impressive yet but we can adjust the curve to get rid of this really ugly linear kind of, well, it's just boring. It's just a boring animation. Because, and it remaps it for us, you'll notice it's still zero to 200 uh, and five. But because we have an actual curve here, we can adjust uh, curve handles, which is pretty neat. So you can, you can uh, move these around, you can get, well, this is still a linear curve. Let me change that. Uh, to be this rounded curve. See, and now I've got the curve handles. So let me put that back to roughly oh, five seconds and 200. That's roughly where we were. And now, just with this, this changed curve, let's go ahead and take a peek at how it looks. See, already we're getting a little bit of ease in and out. A little bit of ease in and out. A little harder to see there because it's pretty subtle, but it is a lot smoother. Now, if I use my left mouse button and drag over this to select, you'll see as I do, uh, as I select and deselect that, the little handle pops up. And I can drag this handle. Let's move out so I can, I can let's do some ridiculous stuff. I'm gonna drag out in this direction. And uh, whoops, 
Didn't mean to do that. Drag out there and pull. So let's get it uh, doing some, this should cause it to snap almost forward and backward a little bit. Let's take a look at that now. See, now we get a little bit of snap at each end of it. Actually, we get a lot of snap at each end of it. There's a bounce, and then it kind of passes over 200 and comes back. So pretty neat. We can adjust the, uh, the way this cube behaves. Like if I come in here in the middle, we can get something a little more dramatic and ridiculous. If I come in this direction, maybe we'll do that. Kind of, kind of do it the opposite of what we were. Yeah, let's get something really wavy. There we go. So it's it's moving, and you can follow what the cube's going to do as it moves through time from zero to five seconds. It's going to animate that variable all the way up here to about uh, looks like about 250, and then it's going to come back down, and here it'll be about 100, and then here it'll be a negative number. It's going to drop below one to probably around negative 20, I'm guessing, and come back up. So you can. You can really kind of, you know, it's not just a guess. You can really set it up how you want it to behave. And there I get some crazy back and forth motion. Now, I'm doing really big, bold gestures to show you how dramatic this is. But that's what you do. You've got time on the right, and you've got value on the left, up and down. So you can use this curve to animate your float over time. Now, let's take a look at the next way I can do that. I'll go ahead and get rid of that animate float. We had animate, we've also got curve. And you may ask, well, how's curve different? Weren't we just using a curve? And yes, we were just using a curve, but we were using uh, one number on the curve to, uh, or one curve to go from one number to another one. Here we get to choose a from value and a to value uh, without using the curve specifically. And I could pass in variables, but let's go ahead and just choose uh, I'll choose the same numbers again since they worked nicely. But here I could say a negative zero to a 200. And I get a few more options. Uh, I can choose a calculation type, like do I want to add, uh, subtract from the value, a multiply, divide. It gives a lot more control over how you move between these. I can set a firm time uh, with just either a number that I pass in as a variable, or I can put a, a firm number in there and a speed, a delay time before any animation occurs if I want, uh, and I still get a finish event. So you can see that this allows you to be a lot more dynamic and have a lot more granular control over it, but you still get a curve in here that you can work with. If I go ahead and take this up, let's just get, uh, we know we needed some big numbers, right? Let's just do five and 50, that's probably enough to get us something visible. And we take a look. And so we're using that curve to morph between the two with the addition of this other information. And now we can use a calculation type, like I can um, subtract from the value of the float if I want to. And that seems to be moving a little slower. Uh, I could uh, divide the value. That gives us much more snappy at the beginning, and then it kind of eases at the end. So you can you can really uh, solve some problems here and do some interesting things. So now we can go spinning around by using multiply. So you can get some really uh, varied action by using this, and you're you're using the curve still, but you're moving between a from and a to number. And just to point out one more thing, uh, I did animate float. You can also do an animate float version two, which gives you uh, a lot of that extra control, but you're still just using the one curve uh, in order to choose the from and two numbers. All right, finally, let's look at ease float. So what does ease do? We still have a from and a two. Okay, let's just pick our same numbers, zero to 200. Uh, a float variable, same thing, the float anim that we've been using to rotate the cube. Uh, time, so I'll give it say five seconds, that seems fun. Speed, delay, we should be used to those by now. And finish events, same thing as the other ones. We can reverse it, meaning flip this whole thing backwards, that's pretty cool. And this time, we get an ease type. And as you can see, there's a whole list of ease types. And what I was creating on the first example with the curve were, were really some ease in out. 
And for those of you not familiar with animation, an ease in and out is a way that instead of just moving at a solid speed from beginning to end, you kind of speed into the thing, then move at full speed, and then ease out to your full stopping speed. And what these are is, you can think of these as mathematical presets. So here's an ease in out quadratic. Let's take a look at how that works. You see how it kind of picks up speed and then slows down at the end. These just really easily and quickly give you um, a lot smoother, nicer, more professional look to your animations. There we go. Uh, there's some really interesting ones in here too. Let me go down to the bottom. Uh, for instance, Elastic. Let's see what that does. That kind of bounces around. See, it's got this nice wiggle at the end. Uh, what's another one here? Bounce. This one's fun. This is like a ball bouncing, like you've dropped a ball. So it moves pretty fast, and then boing, boing, boing. Almost like a shopping cart running into a car or something. You get a lot of really interesting uh, motion. And they're all just presets right here for you to use. So if you don't want to fiddle with the curve, you can come right in and use these ease types. Just pretty cool. And uh, once again, it's better than linear. Sometimes linear is okay, but uh, not very often. That's pretty boring, right? Looks pretty amateurish. So this is a really cool way, not only to make things look better, but also to give you a lot of interesting motion. And remember, these are, are floats, so you can, uh, you could do this to say a health meter that you wanted to charge up. You could do this for the motion of players or uh, objects in your game. You could use it for background elements. You could use it for uh, triggering different AI states. Like anything you'd use a float for, you can use animate, curve, and ease. And it's not just, uh, here, let's set this back to uh, something for the next example. Uh, it's not just for floats. As you can see, we can do this to colors. We can do it to uh, rectangles and we can do it to vector threes. And we have that option, color rect and vector three curve and color rect and vector three ease. So all three types of animation, animate, curve, and ease can be done to floats, colors, rects, and vector threes. Uh, let's just take a quick look at say an animate color. I've got a color anim variable here. Um, you can choose by red, green, blue, uh, and the alpha. You also get time, speed, and delay like you'd expect in a finish event, but you get a separate curve for each color, right? So you can actually adjust. You don't have to move all colors at one, uh, or all elements of your color at one standard rate. You can ease just one or two. So you could tint or shade things over time to uh, give a lot of feedback to the player. And that's the standard animate. If we look at the curve color, we have the from and to value, just like we did with the float, and you still get independent control over the colors. So uh, uh, pretty neat stuff. Same, here's the, the vector three, you get a from and a two, and you can adjust the X, Y, and the Z independently. That's pretty awesome. So again, vector three, great for movement of objects, because you get all three vectors at once. And uh, finally, the rectangle, which gives you, of course, the X and the Y and the width and the height. So you can move all corners of it, uh, like a from and a two, uh, just a standard curve to have it move around. So you can make all kinds of interesting, moving, uh, dynamic elements in your game really easily here with some animate variables. And once you figure out how to use one, you've pretty much had to figure out how to use all of them. And that is animate variables in Playmaker.